Hey guys, so in this episode I want to cover lambda layers. So what really is a lambda layer? So uh, lambda layers are basically used to share code among your lambda function. So uh, what type of code can we share among our lambda functions? So it's basically pretty much anything. It could be like any uh, library dependencies. Say that you are using Node.js and there are a lot of NPM uh, packages that you can use uh, within your Lambda functions, right? So if there are like certain packages that you are using uh, in most of your Lambda functions, uh, you probably like used to install it in your Lambda function. So that is not uh, really a good practice because uh, that in turn increase your package sizes so that your Lambda starting time is getting increased. So what we do instead is like we'll get those uh, commonly used packages and put that into a Lambda layer and then reference that Lambda layer within your uh, Lambdas. So that is one of the use cases. And let's say there are other use cases like if you want to do some configuration for all the Lambdas and uh, you don't want to like put that same configuration in each and every uh, Lambda function, then again, you can create a Lambda layer, put that functionality there and reference it. And also uh, say that you want to do uh, some implementation uh, with regard to your non-functional requirement. Let's say that you want to do some login or you want to do, uh, you know, recording some matrices, especially uh, if you are into kind of a multi-tenant application where a lot of tenants using your lambdas, you know, trying to invoke those lambdas, then you might as well want to, uh, you know, log some tenant contexts. So, uh, other than like putting you know login part within your lambda function you can create a lambda layer that handles logging and also you can create another layer that handles uh, you know recording different matrices and then easily refer those lambda layers within your lambda functions so uh, why do we actually need lambda layers now before lambda layers what we have been usually doing was we either replace the same code among all those lambdas which is not really a good engineering practice because that violates dry principle or don't repeat yourself principle and also separations of concerns. So what we used to do was uh, we created some local packages. Now, if you're probably using uh, Node.js, then you create some local Node packages and then reference it in your package JSON uh, within your lambdas. So that was uh, how we try to avoid that duplication of code or the repeat, repeat, repetition of those code. But now we have a really elegant solution to use Lambda layers. And uh, this Lambda layers not very recently announced service. It was uh, announced back in 2018 reInvent. But I find it really useful. So that is why I thought of creating this uh, particular video to demonstrate to you how to use Lambda layers uh, within your application. So without further ado, Let's get into the code and see how we can use Lambda layers. So as usual, there's a blog post written for this particular video so that you can follow along with all the steps. Now we can create Lambda layers just using AWS console directly, but that is not kind of recommended. You can use a framework like serverless framework or AWS SAM CLI for that matter. But in this uh, tutorial, I will use serverless framework. So first you have to do is you have to install serverless framework globally in your system. So you can do it using npm and then I'll create a new folder called backend and I'm going to create three services. So one of which is a layer service where it includes all our layers. So I'm using AWS Node.js as our runtime and I have two other services to do service and user service. So let's assume this is a to do application with a lot of users. And all to-do related functionalities like creating, reading, deleting, and all the CRUD operation and any other to-do related functionalities will be encapsulated into to-do service, whereas in the use service, all user related CRUD operations. I will create a new folder backend and I will go into my backend and then I will open it in Visual Studio Code. And I'll take an integrated terminal. And let's first create our Lambda layer service. Hit enter. Similarly, I'll create other two services as well. To do service. And you can see the folders getting created. And finally, use service. Okay, if we explore the code, in Lambda layers, we have YAML, 
or serverless yaml and each and every of these services they have this uh, serverless yaml file where all the configuration resides now in lambda layers i don't need this handler.js file now in generally handler.js files is used to put your lambda code but in layers the this path for your layers code is different now in, in node.js it's different path and in uh, Python it's a different path like you can go into the lambda layer documentation I'll put a uh, link in the description as well where it will exactly specify where should we put that code in so once we have created the layer and then reference it in a lambda function it AWS knows or the lambda knows how to get into that layer code depending upon the runtime now I will open serverless.yml file. You can see there are a lot of commented code and you can do a lot of configuration. What I do instead, I will go back to my blog post and I will copy and paste this configuration under creating a Lambda layer. You copy everything or replace it with this configuration. Now if you look at it closely, you can see we are using AWS and Node.js as our runtime and we have a separate section to define our layers now i have only one layer defined you can have multiple layers you know login database uh, if i have another layer to you know share database related code i can simply have my database layer here but i will have only login service for this episode now there are so many options that we can define for a layer which you can find in serverless documentation here I will share this link as well you can see you can define path name description you know different runtime allow accounts now especially this is really useful if you want to share your lambda layer within your same account or you know cross account or maybe you can uh, publish it as a public layer but the only required parameter is path so I just use the path parameter and here I have to provide the location uh, or the folder of our layer so at the moment I don't have that folder let me uh, create that folder called login but now I have to create couple more folders since this is node.js I will create another folder called node.js and inside the node.js I will create another folder called node underscore modules right so inside this node modules folder only I will create another file let's call it index.js where the code related to my lambda layer resides so in node runtime it is important to follow this convention of the folders so make sure to have this node.js folder and you know node modules and only inside that you will put your code then your lambda knows how to look up your code so I will go back to my blog post and if I scroll a little bit down, I will find a simple code for my Lambda layer. So it's nothing but just a function in Node.js. We are exporting it. And uh, this log function, what it all does is it will just return logging from Lambda layer or the logging from layer message. So now what I will do is I will simply deploy this Lambda layer. I will additionally add the region parameter as well. I will change a different region because earlier I already deployed US East one, which is the default region. Otherwise, I will get an error. So now what I will do is I will do SLS deploy. You can additionally pass stage. Let's say dev. Oops, I need to be in the layers folder. So I will cd into layers and then run the same command SLS deploy dash dash stage dev. So as you can see, it's packaging and excluding dependency package, creating a cloud formation stack, and now it is deploying our Lambda layer. All right, so in just a bit, uh, you can see it is completed. And as the output, I will get the layers ARN or AWS resource name. So this is the ARN that we are going to reference in our Lambda function so that those Lambda functions can access this Lambda layer. So let me copy this ARN and now I will go into a different service. So in this case, this is my to-do service which encapsulates all my to-do related functionality. So in this YAML file, now I can configure this Lambda to refer Lambda layer. So now I will go into my blog again. At step number four, we have already completed deploying it and let's go to step number five to use that lambda layer in other lambdas 
now uh, let me just copy and paste this uh, serverless yaml for to do service replace everything with this now my to do service has this function section where i'm defining different functions so here i have a function called to do's so let's assume this will get all my to do's now in this lambda function i need to use my lambda layer so what i'm going to do is i will put that arn i earlier copied into a section called layers now my lambda function can actually reference this layer so where does my lambda function code reside it's in handler.todos so let me go into handler function so at the moment this default function is hello so let me go back to my blog and here i have to do handler code i will copy this so now in my lambda function i can easily require this logging layer you see i'm just referencing my layer name which is logging so i'm requiring it as if this is a already installed package for this lambda but which is not so i have this reference here logging then as the message i am just saying login.log so i am expecting this message to be logging from lambda once it is deployed so in the same time let me update my user serverless yaml as well so i have this user yaml in the blog post paste it and also i will reference the same lambda version or the lambda layer now it's an important point to remember guys this lambda layers are immutable constructs now you can create an update or you can put an update to this lambda layer let's say i want to uh, change this to something else then after i have deployed this lambda layer the layer version is going to be incremented it's not going to replace the previous one because these are immutable so if you ever want to change your lambda layer you can deploy that again and take that new version and go to your lambda function so the services that reference that particular lambda layer then you have to update that version let's say one from two and redeploy this service so there is something we need to remember so let me go back to my user service here also let me put the same code instead of todos this is users okay so let's now try to deploy our todo service and see if that all works fine I clear the screen i will go back to my todo service now in addition to that guys i have implemented an api gateway endpoint to invoke this particular lambda so we can easily test it so let me do sls deploy dash 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 dev and while it is deploying there's another concern that you should be aware about if you scroll down you can see there are like concern section a lambda function let's say that to do function can only reference up to five layers so that's a limit and there's another limitation now it says that lambda layer is just a blob of data in a zip file so when we deploy a lambda layer it zips all the content and then deploy it but the uncompressed size of that lambda layer must be less than 250 megabytes so this is another limit oops i got an another error because i forgot to specify the region redeploy all right the deployment is complete so let's use this api gateway endpoint and see if our lambda function get executed and if it is properly getting executed it should give me the message login.log which reference my lambda layer and show that lambda layer message so let me command click this link oops i got an internal server error so let's do a little bit of debugging so what i will do is i will do ss sls logs dash dash function and this function name is let's see to dos so space to dos and hit enter and let see the cloud watch logs and i got an error cannot find the module logging so then i noticed i did not follow my blog post exactly how it says so the code should be node js node modules and then i have to put the module name again which is logging and then the files 
so let me uh, go to node.js node modules and let me create another folder called login and inside that login i will drag and drop my index.js yep these things happen so what to do i will go to my layers and i will redeploy okay now i have the new version so i will go to my serverless file for to do's and let me update the layer version to 2 as well as for users layer version to 2 and i will deploy to do service again sorry about that guys so let's check this time reload there you go now i got login from layer message perfect so similarly i will go to my user service change the region and then i will deploy it okay it's complete let me click that api gateway link as well there you go i got the message from the layers so both my to do service and the user service referencing the same layer code awesome now before i wind up quick note this layer ARNs you can easily put into SSM or parameter store and easily reference that. So whenever you do an update to your layer, then you can change only that SSM variable, but you have to deploy all your services. So it's best that you will set up some CI CD pipeline for deploying your services. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.